Hey, I'm Mike Baccarella, and today we're going to take a look at how Johnny Smith would cover a lot of range really quickly using arpeggios. Let's take a look. These exercises come from Johnny Smith's book, the Johnny Smith Approach to Guitar, which you can pick up from Mel Bay Publishing. The book is definitely worth looking at. It has tons of exercises and a bunch of you know studies on the guitar using arpeggios and scales that are well worth digging into. The only issue with this book is, rather than being written on treble clef, as we're used to on the guitar, everything's written on the grand staff or switches from bass clef to treble clef, depending on the range. So as guitar readers who typically read treble clef, this book can be a little confusing at first to, to, to get into. But if you can deal with reading a little bit of bass clef, it's well worth your time. These arpeggios cover about three octaves of range on the guitar, and in the book, he's notates it in every single key, major and minor. However, after working through the whole section, I saw that basically, with a few exceptions, there's two fingerings for each arpeggio, depending on whether you're starting on the fifth string or the sixth string. So let's take a look at each of those. Let's start with the minor triad with the root on the sixth string. For this, Johnny Smith takes three arpeggio shapes and links them together to cover the full three octaves. So the first shape, is, I'm, I'm going to demonstrate this in A minor. First shape, we're here on the fifth fret, the first finger. So we're doing just basically one, flat, three, five, like this. So fifth fret, eighth fret, seventh fret. That's the first shape. Now the second shape, we're up here in the ninth position with our pinky on the root here on the 12th fret of the A string. And we do that with our fourth finger, second finger, first finger, so 12th fret, 10th fret, 9th fret. Now for the third shape, we're going up here using this shape. So we're up on the, the 12th position, third finger on the 14th fret of the third string, second finger on the 13th fret of the second string, and first finger on the 12th fret of the first string. And then we, we reach up with our pinky to the 17th fret to, to complete the arpeggio. So if you look at these slowly, we have three full octaves here. I think the fingering that Johnny Smith chose is pretty important for making this sound smooth. So you have index finger, pinky, third finger, and then we're shifting on the same string to our pinky on the 12th fret. So we go. Now we want to make those transitions as smooth as possible. We want it to be, we want, you know, to sound like there's almost no break in the sound. Even though we have to jump, we want to make it sound smooth. And once we hear pinky, second finger, first finger, then we jump up again, the third finger. Again, we want that all sound smooth. Now for minor triads with the root on the fifth string, we use three different shapes again. This time I'm demonstrating C minor. So we have C, E flat, G. And again, I'm using the same shape I started the A minor with. So I got my root here, pinky on the third, and third finger on the fifth. So I got third fret, sixth fret, fifth fret. And then I'm gonna jump up with my third finger to the octave on the same string. So I'm right here on the 10th fret of the fourth string. I got my, my flat three here, and I'm gonna jump up to here <clears throat> for my fifth, so I'm using this shape. I'm gonna move my second finger so I can accommodate the next position. And then I do the same thing again an octave higher. So I'm gonna root, flat three, and fifth. So the whole thing's slow. So again, we have first finger, pinky, third finger, third finger, index, second finger, third finger, index, pinky. And when we go down, we use the same exact fingering again. Now let's take a look at major triads starting with the root on the sixth string. So we'll do this in A major. 
Again, Johnny Smith uses a couple fragments here. So to start with, he has his second finger on the root here on the on the fifth fret of the sixth string, index on the third, on the fourth fret of the fifth string, and pinky on the fifth, on the seventh fret of the fifth string. So that's our first shape. Then we jump up with our pinky to the twelfth fret, to the octave. From here we go up a C form major arpeggio. So go over that solo, we got pinky on the twelfth fret of the fifth string, our third finger on the eleventh fret of the fourth string, index on the ninth fret of the third string, second finger on the tenth fret of the second string, index on the ninth fret of the first string, and then we jump up with our index finger to the twelfth fret to get to the fifth here. And then we reach our pinky up to grab the octave on the 17th fret. And again, on the way down, we use the same fingering. Now for major trides of the root on the fifth string, we're going to, again, take a look at three different shapes. So I'm gonna do this in the key of C. So we start with the second finger on the root, on the third fret of the fifth string, index finger on the second fret of the, of the fourth string, and pinky on the fifth, here on the fifth fret of the fourth string. So that's our first shape. Our next shape is this shape, which is, you know, the top of the E form. Third finger on the tenth fret of the fourth string, second finger on the ninth fret of the third string, and then index finger on the eighth fret of the second string. So that's our second shape. Then we jump up here to the 13th fret, which is our root, the second finger on the second string, index finger on the third to the 12th fret of the first string, and then pinky on the fifth, which would be the 15th fret on the first string. So the whole thing looks like this. Now the awkward part of this one is because you end here with the pinky, you have to then jump up here with the third finger. So it's kind of like you're crossing fingers in a sense. Getting that to sound as smooth as you want it to can be a little bit of a hurdle, but it's, it's worth investing time in. These are some pretty cool exercises to, to kind of open up the guitar in a big way. I recommend practicing really slowly and practicing in all 12 keys. Now, some keys you won't be able to do both shapes in because you'll run out of range on the instrument because it's such a long range. So for example, if I do A minor, if I do it here, I have to use an open string. You know, I can do <clears throat> I can do E major here, but I can't do E major here because I don't have 24 frets. So you have to make some sacrifices, and some keys won't be doable in both spots. But you can make up your own little variations of them or combine them in your own ways to get to get the range you want. So I hope you enjoyed that lesson. Keep practicing. See you next time.